All right. Well, <laughs> that's it. So hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in true Drupal style. We are having a collaborative approach to doing the uh, election and the open board community forum. It's the board election open community forum. So I'll give a brief introduction to why we're here. I'll ask uh, the fellow guests here on the call to introduce themselves and then we'll go right into questions. We have about 45 minutes to discuss and then we'll be recording this to share on with the rest of the community. So I'm here again, hello. <laughs> My name is Nikki Flores. I am Monica Deer on Drupal.org. And I'm here to speak as the Drupal Association current elected community member who is outgoing. And just for reference, the DA, the Drupal Association, is a 51C3 nonprofit dedicated to accelerating the Drupal project, fostering the community, and accelerating its growth. And I'm looking at Drupal.org slash association slash board slash elections. So the board of directors has the responsibility to ensure the effective governance of fiscally sound programs, as well as the strategic direction of the organization. Board members volunteers, they donate their time and their talent and their treasure to help the association meet our mission. And they're also enthusiastic advocates for the association and the Drupal project itself. A board term begins on the 1st of November each year board members required to attend all regular and special board meetings and actively participate in at least one board committee. We have two at-large positions, so those are staggered. So my term ends and then Faye Lauren, our current additional community board elected member will end. And so it'll be constant staggering. Election is open, self-nominated. So all of the people you see on this call have been self-nominated and it is elected by membership, but the Drupal Association membership is at any rate. And you can look for drupal.org to become a member so that you then have an, about, uh, an ability to cast a vote. So with no further ado, I'll have you meet your candidates. I'd go in order from my screen. So I'll start with Alex and then Sefariba, Matthew, Dominic, Will. So if you could, Tell us your name, your pronouns, if you choose, and a short bio, and then we'll just go around Robin around the room. So if you want to take us away, Alex, and then Zephyr. Sure, happy to. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alex Moreno. Uh, I've been in the Drupal community for two decades, and I've worked uh, in Drupal, uh, like in many different roles, in big consultancy, in small and medium companies. I work for the BBC for consultancy like Capgemini, for Akia. Uh, I've done roles as software architect, engineer, I've been in marketing, I've been doing developer relations, I'm a partner manager now, so I'm quite uh, diverse and kind of um, multi trade guy, I guess. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. Thanks so much. Uh, I'll actually move over to Matthew and then Dominique and then back to Sefariba. Sure. My name is Matthew Saunders. My pronouns are he and him. And I'd like to start with a couple of fun facts about myself. I'm the citizen of three different countries, Canada, the US and the UK. And I'm also an avid scuba diver. And that's the reason that the uh, picture is behind me. Um, I've been involved with, uh, with Drupal also for uh, nearly two decades. For 17 years, I've organized Drupal Camp Colorado. Um, and I co-founded and chaired Drupal Colorado, the uh, the uh, organization that uh, that runs uh, Drupal Colorado. Um, I co-founded the events organizing working group um, on Drupal.org, um, and I uh, have also served as a customer service manager and volunteer wrangler for DrupalCon Denver. Um, I've spoken at a ton of different DrupalCons, multiple Drupal camps. Um, and uh, I'm also the admin for the Drupal Facebook page um, and a board alumnus of this board here. Uh, I was the chair of the governance committee for the Drupal Association for about two and a half years. Um, and um, I've worked in the tech world for roughly 28 years. Um, 17 years of those have been in Drupal positions, currently director at Pfizer in a business process analyst role. Uh, but I've worked in the nonprofit world, agencies, large organizations, and, and so on. 
Um, I've got over eight years of board experience on the Drupal Association itself, Drupal Colorado, Crown Point Academy, um, along with my role as an advisory board member on Next for Autism. Um, and basically, Drupal supported my family for the better part of two decades. It's deeply rooted in my identity now. And some of my best friends, supporters, colleagues have come from this community. So I'm here because you've supported me and I want to continue to support you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Sefariba, are you able to discuss or want to check your audio? And I'll have Dominique and then back to you, Sefariba. Hi, everyone. I'm Dominic. Um, I'm in Drupal community for 17 years this year. Um, I've been starting out as a developer and then later started the Drupal company, PropSolid. So I co-founded that uh, with Steven in uh, 2013. Um, I have a unique perspective on the, on the market uh regarding drupal because we've been bringing drupal both to enterprise and smes and also in uh in the package of the dxp um i'm also council member at uh, the matic uh, association so um yeah i'm happy to 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 connect worlds of open source with each other to bring new perspectives to uh to drupal and uh, and and to sail it into blue oceans okay wonderful let's move on to will hi i'm will huggins um i work for mm -hmm. a drupal agency called zucha which i co-founded in 2009 um so i've been actually a member of the drupal community for almost 15 years now um and during that time um we've built uh drupal development teams in the uk which is where we're head office and also in spain and brazil um and we work mainly with um uh, not-for-profit government ngo um and higher ed clients um with, with a few others uh mixed in um and really the the reason why i'm standing for election is i've worked within the drupal community um for obviously 15 years but particularly over the last five or six um much more um uh, kind of assertively contributing um and i just at the moment now feel that i can bring my agency experience and the experience that i've had working within the community to the the uh community board position wonderful thank you so much and i will correct myself uh there are visitors coming to listen to the talks and the other folks who are standing for or who are submitting their names for self-nomination to this election include Albert Hughes and Jana Malikova and Kevin Quillen. So we will be hearing with them shortly. All right, so we can move into some of the questions. So these questions have been created into a file for us from social media. And we'll start again, Ron Robin, if you'd like to respond. The first question is, what is your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy. And I'll say we could do this popcorn style if you feel like you would like to answer that, please do. Um, and I'll moderate. What is your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy? Anyway, so I'm happy to start. Um, I've been involved and then with Dominic. Um, I've been involved in multiple fundraising uh, campaigns at uh, a lot of different uh, uh, nonprofits. Um, it started with the Western States for the Arts Federation, where I worked for eight years. Um, and I've also done fundraising through the Drupal Association, Crown Point Academy, and Drupal Colorado. And what I've learned um, in this period of time, you know, over the last, uh, over the last, uh, gosh, probably, probably 22, 23 years, is that there are really 10 high level tactics that ought to be used by any organization that uh, relies on fundraising for the majority of its operating capital. Um, the first is that you need a clear mission and vision. We already know that the the, uh, the Drupal Association has that. Um, you need a donor centered approach, which which basically means you you need to be in a position where you're you're uh, you're reaching out to your your donors where they expect you to to uh, to to meet with them. 
Um, you need diverse uh, funding strategies. So it can be, you know, at anything from the kinds of things that the association does now, like uh, like uh, uh, event organizing, organizing or or dues on on uh, on memberships and and so on. But it it can go way beyond that. You can do things like like engage in in. Uh, in um, uh, campaigns that um, work with folks who want to put uh, an organization in their will, as an example. Um, you need transparency and accountability, basically, um, around making sure that people know that you're using your money, their money well. Um, it's best if you engage in data-driven fundraising, so using CRMs and so on to ensure that uh, that you've got a good, good, uh, good solid list that, uh, that uh, is accurate. Um, you want to make sure that your volunteers feel engaged and empowered. So, so as they move forward, they become they become um, your your champions. And you want to move with the times. Use innovation and adaptability around your fundraising. Uh, you may find that there are different ways uh, that you can raise money that you hadn't expected. For example, at uh, Drupal Camp Colorado, we started using our old T-shirts and turning them into quilts. And those quilts we uh, we do uh, we do raffles on, which has raised quite a bit of money for us. And I know that's a silly little thing, but but it's a it's a way that you can take something that is a is a resource that you thought was something completely different and change it into something that actually has value to your organization. Um, <clears throat> You need to make sure that you're engaged in stewardship and recognition. That that means making sure that your donors know that they, they're valued and uh, and that uh, um, that you're making sure that their needs are taken care of as uh, as well. And finally, you need to engage in collaboration and networking. Um, I think one of the things that the Drupal Association could be doing, which it's not at this juncture, is looking at, uh, at strategic partnerships with other with other uh, like organizations where we could engage in fundraising together. Together. Um, so that's that's my feeling around it. There's sort of 10, 10, 10 areas I think that we we should be focusing on. I love that. I know that a lot of the Drupal community are are the contribution mentality is very much embedded into the DNA. And I know that there's always been a kind of a push and a pull and a mix between people contributing in all the different ways. And one of the ways is is about the fundraising part. I think Dominique, you wanted to speak about the question as well. It's your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy. Yes. Um, yeah. Apparently, there's also a lot of funding available on the government level. Uh, and like I have a, a, a very tangible uh, example. Like, for example, uh, we are applying to a large grant here in the, in the EU uh, with Open Social. Uh, Drupal, also Drupal company from uh, from from the Netherlands on uh, on the Eurostars uh, grant program of uh, European Commission, um, and, and it's sizable grants. It's a one million euro grant, and the the idea that we have is to um, we we propose a, a project where you work on with two different companies from two different member states. Um, to bring Drupal up to a level of a, of a DXP, of a structured data engine. Um, and they 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 want to fund projects like this and and, and Drupal is just uh, just perfect. So um, there are probably more areas to explore. Um, for example, in the, in the Matic community we also explored the open source funds. Um, like for example AnalNet um where we applied for grants. So um, there's there's some really big donors out there. So I totally agree with uh, with everything Matthew said and 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 we we definitely have to do all this uh, as as well and and I'm pretty sure that the Drupal Association is is already doing a lot of things uh, in the right way like this. Um, but yeah, securing one of these bigger grants from governments, from big funds, that could count. Yeah, and Drupal is definitely starting to come into its own. One of the big grants from this past year is from a sovereign and a technology fund. Uh, Will, did you have some ideas about your approach to nonprofit fundraising and philanthropy? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'm picking up on, on what Dominique said about um, about the grant. So one um 
project that I've experienced in is um, in the UK, uh, a project called Local Gov Drupal, um, which is about creating a distribution that can be used by smaller local government organizations, um, essentially to, to reduce the cost um, of, of developing and, and managing their websites. Um, and that received government funding. So really the kind of first few years of that um, depended on government funding. And now it's uh, been set up as a cooperative. So I think governance as well is, is quite a key element to, to the fundraising. And Matthew touched on it in terms of the transparency. You know, people do want to make sure they understand where their money, if they are um, uh, donating, giving or, or participating, is, is being spent. And so the governance is really important. And again, with local Gov Drupal, that was set up as a cooperative. Um, and one of the nice things about that structure is that um, suppliers, uh, end users and end users in this case being local government organizations um, really um, kind of come together on, on an equal basis as members of, of the cooperative um, and it's quite a healthy way of engendering collaboration um, between organizations that um, that kind of breaks down the traditional buyer supplier relationship and actually makes it much more of a, um, a single unit with a, a common sense of purpose. Um, the other area that I wanted to touch on as well is is some of the more commercial fundraising elements so um, an area that i have been involved in since um, we started it in kind of around 2020 is the the drupal swag shop um, it's not a huge fundraising channel um, but um, it does you know every month it delivers a bit of revenue to drupal association it also helps to promote and get the message out about drupal um, and again i think with um uh, more focus and a bit more, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of initiative around those kind of um, different fundraising models. I think there's there's opportunities there that that um, you know kind of find additional revenue, but also potentially achieve other objectives within the organisation. Love this approach. Thank you so much. Well, um, would you like to mention anything, Alex? Or yeah, um, uh, by the way, I have uh, like your memories from that track shop because it started with will with a conversation we had during the pandemic it's like how do we raise funds for the problem that we have at the moment right uh so it's uh yeah the memories um <laughs> so i think there are two fundamental pieces here one is um philanthropy and i think we need to keep supporting the job that julia is doing on that she's doing uh, you know an amazing job of getting funds from government from wherever she can find that and the other thing is um, we need to be very laser focused on what do we need the money for and what initiatives we want to support. Because once we have a goal, it is really relatively easy to get the money. And uh, i give you an example with Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh started as an initiative in Pittsburgh um, by Dries. And there was a clear goal on, hey, we need money for innovation. We need to you know, uh, push a few initiatives that are going to make Drupal more innovative, more modern. And it was very easy, relatively easy, to get money for. Um, what problems do we have at the moment? We have innovation, right? We need to keep pushing on that. And that's very close to my heart because I work for a year with the Drupal Association pushing on that. I want to keep pushing uh, on that and I want to keep supporting initiatives like Starshot. What problems do we have with that? Uh, we, we have a fundamental problem that is that some initiatives, and I can think of the JavaScript modernization, gets delayed for sometimes years, right? And we can afford to have an initiative as important as, you know, maybe Starshot is not the case because we have a lot of people contributing, but we need to keep pushing on, on that direction. And how do, we, uh, how do we change that? How do we make sure that those initiatives don't get delayed? Well, we have a goal, like, okay, maybe we uh, we need to hire a developer as Drupal Association and we need to get core a core team, a core developer team in Drupal Association itself. That are kind of part of the conversations that have already been happening and the core team is, is happy with that and they are kind of pushing on that direction. But for that, for example, we, we will need money. And how do we raise money for that? Well, um, I like what you were saying, Matt, in terms of, you know, we've been working for so many years in Drupal, we got so much back and my case is the same. I feel really grateful for, for Drupal and the community. So we need to start asking everyone, individuals and companies to give back, right? Maybe give up a percentage of your earnings or however formula works for you. 
but at the end is we need to make Drupal more sustainable. We need to make the Drupal Association as well more sustainable and make the whole ecosystem more dynamic and ensure that initiatives like Starshot or whatever is coming next, uh, innovation, etc. We need to make sure that they don't get blocked and, and we have someone internally that is, is capable of pushing uh, forward. And I'll give you an example. I think it was the project browser. It got blocked for a little bit of time. And then Fran from the Drupal Association got involved. And what it happened to be like months and nothing was happening when Fran, and not necessarily because Fran is amazing, he is amazing, but when he got involved, suddenly we could see in the issues how, you know, in a few weeks, just a few months, the project went forward and, and it got kind of unblocked, right? So that, that's what we need at the moment. That's kind of what is blocking innovation and Drupal moving forward. And that's kind of what we should be fo focusing, oops, I need to drop, uh, focusing uh, the fundraising. Wonderful. I'm loving this energy and I, I do appreciate, there's a number of Drupalers at the latest DrupalCon. I noticed looking around the room, many people have been like the folks here I've been working on Drupal for a decade. I've been working on Drupal 15 years, 17 years. So there's a lot of folks who have built their careers, including myself, right? And I love that idea that we can all bring people back and say, you know, you've supported yourself through this, time to give back. So I have a few other questions. I think it's very much related to this idea about energizing and increasing membership. So we'll start with, uh, in your perspective, the way the question is written, what is the best way to welcome and sustain new first-time Drupal contributors. So I think first-time Drupal contributors would be folks contributing to Drupal, maybe as the platform, maybe as the association, but yeah, maybe answer the question as you see fit in your perspective. What's the best way to welcome and sustain new first-time first -time Drupal contributors? Maybe that's the key is many people are new. So maybe if you've had a more longer term relationship with Drupal or with the community, what do we do about folks coming in? Because there's many people who maybe have heard about it from their current CMS exploration or know about it from other channels. Yeah, I might dive, dive in first on this. Um, I, I think, um, and I'm someone who um, isn't a developer. Um, so um, I've got, you know, kind of feel like uh, amongst my peers, Within the Drupal community, um, I um, don't quite don't always talk the same language in terms of contribution, and it's and it's taken me, you know, quite a number of years to find my place in terms of where I can add the most value and where my contribution can be most effective. Um, but I think um, for both the technical types of contribution and and um, uh, and the other types of contribution, I think um, there's there's a um, definitely that kind of moment um, that comes from uh, making your first contribution. Um, I think uh, a, a number of new uh, potential contributors perhaps um, tread around the edges for a while. Um, so one of the things that I, I felt would be useful is to have um, a, more of a, um, a user journey. Um, Dominique, you probably will um, have some good ideas on this with your Mortic experience, um, which is... Um, you know, when, when someone registers on Drupal.org, um, uh, maybe um, have more uh, encouragement. Um, so, well, you know, kind of literally, it's like a CRM system in that it kind of triggers to say, you know, congratulations, you know, you've now set up your Drupal.org account. Uh, what do you want to do next? Do you want to get in touch with a mentor? You know, that kind of thing. You know, I think we've got a brilliant mentoring program and we've got some absolutely phenomenal people that manage it. Um, and I think the more that we can connect new users with those mentors and just get them over that first hurdle of making their first commit or their first contribution, or even just their first time attending a call or contributing in an async meeting on Slack. Um, I think these are the, the little baby steps that get those first time users to, to start becoming regular contributors. Yeah. I, I I agree with you entirely. I think the the other thing is that we we need our contributors to feel welcomed and valued, right? And I think back um, about um, way way back DrupalCon Barcelona in two thousand seven. It was my first Bar uh, DrupalCon, and I'd been involved in Drupal all of maybe maybe uh, maybe uh, three or four weeks, and uh, wow. the agency that I was working for at that point brought me to Barcelona and. 
one of the first people that I met was Angie Byron and, um, and she sort of became, yeah. And she became an anchor for me. Right. Um, And that, that, that anchor, that, that very beginning of, of such welcomingness and kindness um, uh, lodged me into this community. And personally, I've tried to approach every interaction that I have with others very much as she has with grace and kindness um, and um, and with a with 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 humility, because we all were newbies at one point. We were all people who were coming into this community um, as 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 people that were maybe a little little uh, overwhelmed by everything that we were seeing, and not just by not just by the uh, by the people, um, because we've got some very big personalities, but also by the the sheer size of this project. Right, it's the largest open source project in the world. So I think part of what we need to do is we need we need to have clear expectations, right? Um, there needs to be a situation where where new new uh, contributors don't feel a ton of pressure, but contributions have become something that's fun. It's something that they want to do over and over and over again because the experience that they had was really good. It gave them that little bit of dopamine, um, you know, little dopamine hit, whether it's code documentation or event planning. And it's critical for us to to uh, to help new members uh, of the community navigate this enormous thing in a way that makes them feel comfortable and happy because it really is enormous. Um, they should be in, they should feel like they that they can get involved with decision making and they should get immediate recognition, ongoing per, uh, appreciation for what they bring to the table. Um, and they need to feel like what they do is meaningful and it aligns with the kinds of things that they want to do. So, for example, you will. You're not a coder, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't be a meaningful co contributor. You can contribute in other ways, like like helping with uh, with setting up events and stuff like that. And in fact, even though I've uh, been an engineer my uh, most of my my uh, my career, the vast majority of what I've done has been around event organization as opposed to code contribution, because it felt like uh, there are a ton of people con contributing code when I was getting into this, but not enough people who are trying to help help push um, events forward. So that's a place where I sort of threw myself in. And awesome. volunteers, I think, feel like they want to grow, right? They want to be in a position where they can where they can grow and and uh, become better at what they do. And sometimes these roles can turn into employment. Um, so you know, our community is critical to the health of the Drupal pro project. And I've often said, if Drupal do, were to go poof, it was would were, were to not exist any longer. The friends and the network that I've built here would last forever, and that has to do with the way the contributions have sort of built this community. Wonderful. I think we can move to some other questions that had been coming in from social media. So kind of the flip side of that is if you had a particular strategy for recruiting new members to the Drupal Association, what would that be? So we talked about the best ways to welcome and sustain them. Now, here you are, your first day, put your hat on time to recruit new members, what would you do? Maybe your top two ideas. And we'll start with Dominique. Yeah, that's exactly what we had to do last year <laughs> in, the, in the Matic community when, um, when the project became independent. And there was the, the seed funding from Acquia, but it was not going to last forever. Um, so yeah, new new members had to had to come in. So how to get to uh, how to get to new members? How to make them see a uh, value? Um, like one of the new members that joined was actually the Drupal Association sponsoring my, yeah. So yeah, and 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 the value the Drupal Association saw was that connecting with other open source projects would bring value to the project because. Um, Drupal is not the only project that is supporting uh, the open web philosophy. There's many others, and together, uh, actually, we are we are a lot stronger because we can bring more capabilities uh, to the end customer, which a lot of proprietary uh, packages they do they do bring it all together out of the box, uh, very polished. And in the open source ecosystem, it's a bit more fragmented. So there is huge value bringing in 
bringing together uh, all all these uh, these projects. Um, like for example, with the Mate community, there's also uh, conversations going on with uh, with Typo Three with Joomla. Um, yeah, so making making these connections, um, I think it could also work for uh, for the Drupal Association bringing new members, <clears throat> and then creating new markets for uh, for Drupal will also uh, bring in a lot of potential companies. Like for example, um, I believe one of the benefits of the Starshot project will be that uh, a lot of uh, SMB type of uh, agencies, SME type of agencies will be able to join again and see value in becoming a Drupal Association partner, becoming certified um, because they can bring it to their end customers. So. Um, bringing Drupal into new markets uh, definitely will help. Also on the enterprise level, if we can uh, if we can bring Drupal in uh, in organizations uh, through, for example, the the DXP packaging, which vastly extends uh, the capabilities of uh, of of Drupal, um, you would also bring it to other organizations doing the implementation, which could become part of the Drupal Association and support the project. So for me, I think the key is bringing Drupal to um, as many relevant markets as possible and building connections with uh, other uh, open source uh, projects. Yeah, could, could really expand uh, the, 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 the membership structure, uh, the supporting partners. Um, and even it could have an impact on, uh, on, on, on the grants itself, because it would be a larger ecosystem worth contributing to. Fascinating. You know, this is interesting because, <clears throat> excuse me, I had immediately thought that the question was related to individual members, but you're talking about kind of like a larger perspective, industry members, agency members, folks who are even other associations and open source. Fascinating. It's a great way. So again, the question is, what would be your strategy? It looks like Alex, would you like to <laughs> answer this question? What would be your strategy <clears throat> for recruiting yeah, so Drupal Association? I, I think we need to come back to what I was saying at the beginning. We need to make this sustainable and we need to look at uh, the goals and especially at that part, right? Because we, we don't want to have the situation what happened a few years ago with the Drupal Association where, you know, it has scaled a lot, but suddenly it had to get rid of most of the people because it, it escaped without sustainability in mind and without uh, having in mind where the money was coming from. That's a big problem at the moment. And it has been for so many years because the money uh, for the Drupal Association is coming mostly from Drupal cons in a huge percentage. So we need to bring people on board that aligns with the goals, uh, the goals of innovation that I was saying before, Starshot, and also that aligns with uh, that model of sustainability. Again, and coming back to Julia, because, you know, she's focused on, for example, on that, but we need to bring more people that can kind of um, get us on the right path on, on to make Drupal cons less important for the Drupal Association and uh, have a, the Drupal Association more um, kind of sustainable model and more independent. And then we need, as I was saying before, we need... Um, to focus on the project because we are talking a lot about you know money and sustainability. But what about Drupal? Uh, what our, 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 our goals? Um, what do we need to push for? Uh, what do we need? Do we need a developer? Do we need a project manager? So that's kind of the different roles that we maybe need in, in terms of you know making Drupal more sustainable and more more food future proofed. Yeah, I think it would be a good opportunity for us to remind folks listening in or listening to the recording that drupal.org slash association slash ripple makers is the newest initiative to encourage individual members on an ongoing basis or as a small donor type of basis. You just sign up and have a recurring donation. So this is this idea of sustainability, not just a one time. You know, as we know, this all started with say DrupalCon is the big thing and then that's it. And then back to DrupalCon and then that's it. So now we're talking about spreading it out across the yeah. year and across different types of users, across different levels of users. And yeah, I love that, and, that idea. And I think I think that tactic is is really important, right? The Ripple Makers program seems really good to me. And and I think I think one of the our challenges is like at an individual level, 
Um, the last count, I think, was 2,488 uh, individual members, which, when you think about the size of our project, is, is, is a tiny, tiny portion of the people who actually use Drupal um, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so one of the things that, from a, just a tactical level, um, because other people have talked more at a, at a 10,000 foot level, but at a tactical level, I think that we should uh, maybe have, have, a, have a program where every single camp has a membership drive. So when she, people show up, um, we take a quick look to see whether they're an association member or not. And if they're not, we can sign them up right there at a complimentary level. And what that would do is at least put us in a position to see who the people are and we can start to build on how that membership can be grown from that point. Um, and obviously we need somebody who, who, would, uh, who would manage that, a central place, a central person or persons who could help build out that kind of, that kind of uh, system. Um, but this is something that could be used at camps, cons, meetups. Um, um, I, think, I think part of the, part of the challenge that we've got is that we're not, we're not necessarily meeting the people who we want to be members where they gather. I love that idea. And I, I'm thinking right now, when you go on an airline like Ryanair or EasyJet or whatever, and they add a checkbox which says, do you want to contribute with $2 exactly. to whatever? Why don't we add or we ask Drupal Camps to, hey, why don't you add a checkbox where you ask, do you want to contribute with $2, $5, or whatever you can contribute with with the ticket that you're buying for this Drupal Camp, right? That will increase um, membership association. I don't know what I think it's worth to try. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, this is fascinating because, you know, I think a lot from the perspective of somebody who's contributing, maybe they feel like their contribution is already enough. Like now you're asking me to do something else. I'm just thinking about the pros and cons. I can also think of the objection being, well, my, uh, my business pays for it, right? So for example, if I already have the badge, then there's no need for me to get another badge to be an individual. So I think there's all these different ways that we can start to discuss how to I'm a card carrying, you know, I'm Drupal number and it has the, ba the badge number with your number on there. So love these ideas. Uh, would anybody else have some ideas about a strategy for recruiting new members to the Drupal Association? I think what one other element to add perhaps is, is to think about some of the, the core motivations for becoming a member. Um, so obviously altru altruism is one, but it's not often the major one or the key driver um, it may be because you know it helps me to do my job better or um, it helps to build my CV and my skills um, and I think definitely for um, for the developer community there's something really tangible in that that we can promote more um, so you know if you're a um, you know junior developer um, then actually building your Drupal.org profile getting your contributions up is actually a, a massive CV point you know a, a, as valuable potentially as as actual work experience, um, so there's a really tan you know there's a very tangible benefit to membership that we can promote a lot more, and and similarly then for non-developers, so whether you know if you're a marketeer or a content designer, then actually what you know what elements can I get involved in at the Triple Association that will help me to build my skills, gain more experience in the field that I specialize in, and also really kind of build my my CV and my professional persona. Um, and again, I think that's probably the least developed within the, the Drupal community in terms of the ability to, to kind of nurture those sort of skills and, and help them to flourish. Um, but, you know, that just presents just, you know, a huge opportunity um, because it's a whole new audience of contributors and Drupal Association members that we're perhaps not really talking to or, or, or demonstrating the benefits of membership to. Yeah, this is fascinating. I mean, I think that a lot of that is the intrinsic nature. People are like, well, of course I'm a big contributor. You know, I've been here. I've contributed everything that you're using in your Drupal build. And then you're talking about the kind of making that more apparent, right? Like, yeah. yes, and here's your kind of brotherhood or sisterhood of the, <laughs> the hard carrying. I love that. All right. Well, we're a little bit, I know we had a later start, so it does put a damper in the amount of time we have to discuss some of the questions, but we do have an additional question here, uh, two more. We can talk about how you will embed principles of diversity, equity, inclusion into your board seat if you are elected. 
So that can be on the floor as well. Question is, how will you embed principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion into your board seat if you're elected? I can take this mm -hmm. one first, if that's all right. Um, I, I mean, I think the Drupal community, it's one of the things that I really admire and value in the Drupal community in, is, is its ability to um, you know, promote those values and also provide governance to ensure that there's, there's protection, but also freedom, that there's no um, censorship, but there's um, uh, moderation. You know, so, so I think there's, there's a really good balance and I, and I definitely wouldn't um, suggest that there's any major changes that need to be made. The one that I would suggest is, um, is to think much more clearly about uh, financial exclusion um, so I think there are some communities, and, and if we think about DrupalCon as a as a key, you know, um, flagship event, um, it's quite an expensive. If if you're not being funded by a company to go, it's quite an expensive endeavour, um, and actually I think that potentially excludes um, members of the community or or indeed members of of, a, of the wider community that we would want to bring into the Drupal community. And I know we have, you know, scholarship programs and, uh, um, you know, kind of different initiatives to try and break down those barriers. Um, but I think I, I think that we could do more um, to, to kind of broaden the net really, and just make sure that no one's left out that, um, you know, really wants to and, and, you know, brings value to the community that actually, What's stopping them is is financial exclusion. I completely yeah, agree with you, Will. Um, you, that's that's uh, I think the biggest thing um, um, uh, around around exclusion in our community. Um, and I and I want to start by just you know uh, take a look around this room here real quick, um, and uh, the folks that are on the screen. Um, I, I want to recognize my privilege as a as a straight white male. Right, it's given me huge advantages. And um, um, there, there are things that you can do with those with it, those advantages. Um, and you know, back in back in 2019 at Drupal Camp uh, Con Amsterdam, personally, I chose to uh, very very publicly disclose my neurodivergence as a person with ADD, dyslexia, and autism. I did a, I did a, a talk on it. Um, and uh, um, lucky for me, or maybe unlucky for me, I don't know which, uh, but uh, members of my company were there. And so suddenly I was also disclosing uh, within, within, uh, within my company. Um, and that really, that really continued for me a, a journey of advocacy that started way long time ago um, while helping my daughter navigate through a neurotypical world as a uh, neurodivergent child. And, and she's not just diverse because of her own neurodivergence. She's also Hispanic. We adopted her from social services. And, and um, she, she, uh, I needed to watch her sort of navigate through, a, um, a, frankly, a very white world. Um, so at one point, I chose to put her into a, 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 um, a school, um, 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 a, a, a very specific school within within uh, within the school system here in the United States um, called Crown Point Academy, um, and that uh, that uh, school was uh, largely comprised of of a, a large diversity of ethnic uh, different ethnicities, and I in, ended up sitting on the board of uh, directors for for that uh, for that school board. Um, so I've chosen over the last two de decades to to strive for those who are di are diverse to have equitable and inclusive positions in our various societies, and I use societies in a in a in a sort of um, bigger way than just thinking about like uh, like like a country or or something like that. We have micro societies as well, um, and you really for me this has ranged from being. Um, on that school board, speaking about neurodiversity at different events, advocating advocating for uh, for universal design in workplaces. Um, at, at Pfizer, I sit on the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council, and in that capacity, I became one of the founders of the Neurodiversity Colleague Community Group. So for me, my life is embedded in the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I feel like that's something that I would just bring, um, I would bring that energy and insight to the association naturally as part of the way that I that I view the world. Oh, I love that. Um, I like the idea of we're a country. <laughs> what if we have our own Drupal country called Drupal land? <laughs> Alex, how will you embed principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion? I, I 
I, I like what we are talking about financial diversity and um, I have a really like interesting example I went I had the privilege to go to Drupal uh, sorry work can uh, in Torino recently and I was amazed by the price like first the scale it was like three thousand something developers uh, and then the scale of that you you have the price of the tickets which was like fifty dollars or fifty euros. Uh, we need to learn what Dominique was saying before. We need to learn how other communities are doing it, right? And how we can make it as you know ridiculously cheap. Maybe the 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 the, the model that we are following, maybe the the way we are bringing money. Again, I think we should uh, make the Drupal Association less uh, dependent on Drupal cons, and that will allow us to you know to move around those those small uh, more problems. In terms of diversity. You can't think that we are doing great, right? Because you go to DrupalCons and we have a very diverse community and everyone feels welcoming. But actually, we don't know that. We don't know that because you know those things when you bring diverse people and they tell you, hey, this thing that you are doing is... is you, you are, you know, showing your ideas as a white male who lives in Europe. What about Africa? We don't have a lot of representation from Africa, right? Asia, we can do much better. We are going to Asia now, which is great. How about we organize a DrupalCon in Africa? And uh, yeah, like uh, the main, my main pain here that I've been trying to push for many years is the, the younger generations. We are getting old. We need to bring new ideas. And those new ideas, they are not coming from me. I'm, go I'm starting to get old. And I, I hate to admit that, but we need younger generations and we need to look at the model. How do we bring those people? How, how are the projects are doing it? Like next years, it looks really appealing and, you know, people like they leave university, maybe because they've been looking at, you know, uh, those languages at universities, like, oh, this is cool. Maybe we need to go to universities. Maybe we need to make a model that can scale up and we have groups of people, like it is happening here in, in Spain, like we have some groups uh, building some kind of training and they go to high school and universities and they show Drupal, you know, what you can do with Drupal and, and the amazing things that, uh, that we saw when we were starting with Drupal so many years ago. Cool. All right. I want to be mindful that it is five minutes to the end of the scheduled time. We have one more question on how to prioritize. How will you prioritize the governance of the Drupal Association? I'll have uh, anyone who wants to speak to that, and then we can do the closing probably two minutes to the end of the hour. So yeah, Dominique, you have an answer. How will you prioritize the governance of the Drupal Association? Yeah, I think uh, is a huge opportunity what is happening now with uh, with the Starshot project. Uh, uh, you 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 see that uh, Drupal is being being packaged as a uh, as one of the best CMS out there if this project is successful. But all this also leaves an opportunity uh, for the core also to be the best core lying around there. So. Um, what could be, and it's already happening, uh, you have a Starshot Council right now. Um, it's, I don't believe it's, it's something permanent. It's, it's until the, the, the project is actually there, but I would love to see that evolve into a, a permanent structure. Like you could call it then uh, the, the Drupal CMS Council, uh, because this would give, um, give these types of projects extra power. And it would also make clear that a similar uh, effort could be beneficial for, uh, for the Drupal core, because with the Starshot project being packaged as a CMS and a separate product, this would leave more opportunities for the core to be the basis of even more open source projects. So a governance on that level um, and a separation there without, without uh, of course, uh, um, not being unified. It still needs to be unified. We, we still need to make sure the core and the CMS and the product part stays connected. But I believe there's an opportunity there. Yeah, I like that. Uh, does anyone else have an idea on how you will prioritize the governance of the Drupal yeah. Association? Yeah, Matthew. Yeah. 
Yeah, so so I, I I would approach governance a little bit differently than at uh, that a uh, program level, um, like uh, like Starship um, uh, initiative. Um, when I think about governance when you, within a nonprofit, I think about what the structures are around how the organization is uh, is built and how how it runs and whose responsibilities uh, lay in whatever uh, uh, what what uh, what uh, what um, what sections you know uh, staff have different responsibilities than board and some of those responsibilities do do overlap. Um, and uh, and the executive committee has different responsibilities than some of the other members of the board, as an example. Um, so I was a chair of the governance committee, actually, of the Drupal Association for nearly two and a half years. Um, and during that period of time, I shepherded uh, the association to increase the length of our at-large uh, board positions from one year to two years. So one of the reasons, Nikki, that you are sitting on the board for two years is because I spent the time within the organization making organizational change. I also implemented um, uh, term limits for board members at the time to help limit uh, burnout. And I think that that's actually a big problem that uh, that we uh, that we still need to, to address. Um, I actually was one of the people that helped craft the association's current mission, vision, and values. Um, so I think, I think one of the things that I'd like to be focused on personally, if I, if I get back on, on the board is to, um, focus on the continued evolution of the association's embrace of diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, particularly in that area of neurodiversity that we're talking about. And I also want to shape the association's succession planning a little bit, uh, a little bit more, um, firmly, um, you know, watching from the outside and having been on the inside for a little bit. Um, I know that uh, secession planning has always been a challenge, and uh, it's a place actually that I've been that I've been putting a, quite a lot of uh, work within uh, within Drupal Colorado um, and uh, and other organizations that uh, that I've been involved with. And I think that uh, some of that experience could help um, help the uh, the association um, move that uh, that needle forward. I have no, I have no misgivings um, or 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 whatnot that uh, that uh, when you come in as an at large member that you can make huge changes to the to the organization, um, but you can find small areas within the governance structure that can allow you to make meaningful changes that can help the organization move forward. Thank um, you. So, you know. Yeah. Thank you so much, um, Alex. You wanted to say something about. Uh, yeah, I would say just 10 seconds because I'm not an expert on this area, but what I think we, knew, we need on this is ensure that the community has a voice, but ensure as well that the Drupal Association has the freedom to act, you know, and the freedom to move to make Drupal innovative and amazing again. Yeah, wonderful. All right, folks, so we are at time. I thank everyone for your time and those of you who are listening in. So the reminders are the drupal.org slash association. There's a list on the right-hand side. You can find the elections tab and everyone who is running has written a more in-depth blog post so you can learn more about our candidates. Voting will begin 15th of August at midnight coordinated universal time. So that'll be, I guess, in about 20, 20 I don't do the math, but within the next 24 hours and then voting will close 5 September at 2359 coordinated time. So what this entails, though, is you will have to have a uh, association membership. So do look online. The board ratification process happens the 6th through 16th October. And then we'll have our new board member announcement at DrupalCon Barcelona at the public board meeting. And so I will look forward to seeing one of you or more of you at DrupalCon Barcelona. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate your uh, insight and your opportunity to serve and all of the knowledge and insight you bring to this position. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye now.